uh, not the triple digits, but uh, some of those temperature highs around the country are just This time last year, we, we were in the Big Bend area of Texas, which is right along the Rio Grande, and it was 130 plus. You don't realize how hot hot is until <laughs> you think, well, can, isn't there like a limit? Once, can, once you're at 115, can you really feel a lot hotter? Yeah, you really, really can. You, it, you feel like your, your skin is just crackling when you're outside in that heat. About uh, somewhere around 25 years ago, give or take, uh, there was a Little League tournament at Oatsdale Park, and we were covering it. And the temperatures the first couple days were triple digits. The hottest it got was, I think, 104. And there was three straight days where it was above 100. And you're just thinking to yourself, I just can't get any hotter. And then the next day it would go up another two degrees and then another two degrees. On the Friday of that week, the high was 92. It felt chilly. <laughs> <laughs> You know, it would you, you get acclimated to it uh, to a certain extent, but man, just be careful. Drink uh, lots of fluids. Uh, jump, if you don't have AC, duck into some place that does. You know, go see a movie, whatever. And if you do have AC, hopefully it continues to work uh, for you. Our guests in this segment are very concerned that uh, uh, all of us make sure that we don't leave our animals. It goes without saying, small children, obviously in cars on a hot day no matter for how long you think you might be dropping into a store for and you think you might crack the windows or whatever or not even in some cases with folks you look inside and you'll see a dog or a cat in there hopefully not a child uh, inside of a hot car and that's just something you just can't do not in this kind of in kind of heat that we have here judy boykin good morning judy how are you I'm doing great. And you brought along a guest. You guys are in patriotic colors, too. Yeah, how about that? <laughs> Kathy Tomlinson, if I got the last name correct, right? You did. Kathy, you good did. morning to you. And good morning. Thanks for having us. Thanks for coming on. Judy, do you want to take a moment to show everybody the back of your shirt? Sure. <laughs> Make sure we can get it get you on camera. And stand up a little bit. Ashton. Even Trump. Even my dog likes Trump. Now, I need to get your chair out of the way because this, the dog's got a Trump comb over. There you go. Get your head <laughs> the there you go. Uh, there it is. <laughs> that's a, that's a, a. No, I don't care whether you like that's a Trump great picture. or not. That's yeah. just funny. The dog's got the Trump haircut going on there. Oh, you can sit back down. All right. Make, didn't mean to make you model your t shirt. I need to plug back in. Did you unplug? Yes, I did. All right. Take your time there. Kathy, let's talk about uh, animals and cars and what your organization does. Well, we're very concerned about um, animals being left in the cars. And it's not only because it's 90 degrees now. It's funny, last night on Facebook, a memory popped up of my letter to the editor from 2015. So it was, you know, this is the time when we always think about it. But even when it's 70 degrees it's still dangerous to leave your dog there. Mm -hmm. The temperature can go up really quickly. And I really do think it's a education thing because I think if you love your dog enough or your cat or whatever, take them for a ride, you're not gonna purposely leave them in a car where they can get hurt, mm -hmm. you know? So I think they don't know. But recently I saw a couple posts on Facebook in Hedgesville area, um, dogs and cars. And um, this is something we've been working on. AWV, which is Animal Advocates of West Virginia, started in 2009. We were trying to get a tethering ordinance, a sensible, enforceable tethering ordinance. Were you part of the group that started it? Yes. And um, there was just a couple of us, and it started with Journal Junction. I wrote a Journal Junction, and then people came together. And um, Bill was instrumental in getting that passed. Was, and his bill was part of the county commission at the time? Mm -hmm. And um, he and Ron Collins were like absolutely <laughs> the champions for us. And in 2010, they passed uh, an ordinance. And that was our goal. We were going to just, you know, we were a group of people and we were going to just stop. But then people started coming to us. We have this problem. We have that problem. And um, so we started working on little things. You know, there were... Uh, mostly education and legislation. And um, we were lucky because we had some legislators in our group that joined our group. Mm -hmm. And we did get some things passed. 
And, um, but then, you know, everybody was getting older. There weren't a lot of things happening. And so we kind of just stuck with the education part of it. Um, unfortunately, in 2019, the House passed a bill that said um, if emergency personnel went into a car to rescue an animal, that they, that, that was okay. But it went to judiciary and it never left there. So um, I'm thinking that might be something. Only West Virginia and New Jersey have that it's a criminal offense to leave your dog in the car, but not give some break to somebody going into the car. So if you if you're you're walking, let's say it's today, ninety four, mm -hmm. ninety five, and you're going to drop, uh, you're going off to shop someplace, and you walk by a car in the parking lot, the windows are up, there's a dog inside there, cat, whatever. What are you supposed to do? Call the police. Um, call animal control probably call the police first. Um, my first thing is I would go into the business, and I've done that, go into the business and ask them to make an announcement. Some places will, some places won't, to ask the person to go to the car, you know, return to their vehicle. Um, sometimes they'll say they can't do that, management doesn't allow it, corporate doesn't allow it, you know, whatever. Um, but the police, that you should call the police. I mean, I know like when I saw on Facebook, people were like, oh, I'll just break in. I would just break in. I would do this. I would do that. But that's also a crime. <laughs> so, you, you know, personally, you have to weigh that. And right now, even I mean, it's just the police have gone in. I think it was like in 2015, a dog was in a van at the cinemas down there by Martin's when it was mm -hmm. a cinema. And um, the police came and they did go into the car, into the van, get the dog, and they waited for the person to come out a couple hours later. But um, now, there was a canine that uh, succumbed to heat inside of a police vehicle recently. Do you know where that was? Um, last year in West Virginia, there was one. But this year in Savannah, Missouri, mm -hmm. a um, canine, and it's still under investigation. So we don't really know what happened there. And that's the other thing. People think if you leave your air conditioner on and your car running, it's okay. But what if the car shuts off or the air conditioner shuts off? And, and most police cars have alarms. So they fail too because otherwise the police would know that something was wrong with the dog. Um, there's been a lot of canines that have died over the years. Um, but in West Virginia, we had one last year, and then recently, that's what really got me thinking, like, I think we have to try, we tried everything, like, from 2010 until probably 2021, maybe, 2022, uh, we wrote letters as a group to car manufacturers, to stores, we asked them if we could put posters up, um, we asked if we could put the message on the receipt. You remember how the grocery stores used to have the ads on the back? And we thought that this message for the summer would be awesome. But they wanted money. And we didn't have money because mm -hmm. we're not a 501c3. We were a grassroots group. And they wanted lots of money, <laughs> like $500 to just put that message on for a few months. The journal did run um, our PSA every single day for the summer for free. Um, but my, now I was thinking like, I don't know what that, you know, I don't know how many people are actually getting the journal. I don't know if the journal has room to do that for free anymore. So well, I'm happy to run your PSA here on this and, station. And we, and I think you, you, you can stay afterward and record it if you like. Uh, oh no, you could do it. <laughs> I'm here. That's, a, that's, a that's as much commitment as you're going to make, right? Yeah. Um, but it's just really important. Like we did, uh, an educational thing at the senior center years ago. And we had so many people saying we were wrong. You can leave your dog in the car as long as you crack the windows. And we're like, you can't. You don't understand that the temperature can go up like 20 degrees in 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, some, so, you know, they said, well, we always did it. And my parents always did it. And, you know, so I do just think it's an education thing. We just need to not leave our children, our pets, 
in the cars when it's hot. And that's our that's our slogan. Mm-hmm. Protect your children and your pets. Bill, do you remember working on this ordinance when you were on the commission? Well, now, the tether ordinance I very much remember. In fact, uh, uh, some of the images which uh, Kathy and others provided remain with me today. It's uh, some of the cases, dogs that were jumping, one case a dog jumping over a fence, and the tether would not be long enough to, uh, to let it go down to the ground. Uh, to the ground so it strangled to death and there were several mm. several instances such as this i was surprised uh there was some pushback on that and you would think that the uh it'd be just common sense you protect your animals but there were some folks that said don't don't get in my backyard don't there's no regulations uh but uh it did pass and i think is a good good bill and one that i'm quite proud of that having a part of it. but again kathy and her group or the one responsible for making it happen. Let me shift gears a little bit back to the cars. And uh, I know the focus of your visit today are, are heat and cars, but just walking your dog, mm-hmm. they can get overheated. And uh, just last week, uh, we've had three dogs, two of our own and, and a guest visit. And the dogs came back from a not a long walk and they were in bad shape. They were older dogs, mm-hmm. but uh, so be cautious of your animals, either in a car or just walking. So what are the recommendations? You're traveling from here to there, a, a great distance, and the family includes the dog. You need a potty break. The place does not allow animals in there. What are your options? How about windows all the way down? No. Well, but then how do you keep the dog I don't know. The car still That's the gets trade-off, hot. isn't it? Right. So, um, t- it, somebody has to stay in the car with the dog. Leave your dog home. Yeah, but what if you're traveling? Well, you, it's, I mean, it's a, depends on the trip, right? Can't kennel the dog. Um, one of my pet things is like I've never gotten over it, and when Mitt Romney was running for um, president, um, I, every meeting that we had, I reminded people what he did. He put his dogs in the crate on top of the car and drove like that and um maybe it was education maybe he didn't know he didn't i mean i may, even, have, may have cost him the presidency well if i had anything to do with it it did unfortunately um but he it's i i don't even like it when you see dogs with their heads hanging out the window it's dangerous mm-hmm. you know um bill so, is right about the hot pavement and the heat like my dog's they went out, they did what they have to do, and they came straight back in. It was too hot for them. Yeah. <laughs> are some breeds better, I know, some, breed, be, blah, some breeds are better suited to cold than mm-hmm. to heat. Does it work the other way too? I have a very, I have a, um, she's a mix of Boston Terrier and King Charles Spaniel. Just adorable. But I understand because of the short snout that they are particularly prone to heat stroke. So she doesn't go out for long walks these times. But she does like to go out and lay in the sun, and that's fine. She, but lots of water and all of that. I would have to think for these long haired dogs, you have goldens and for some like huskies and akitas, they, that must, they must be miserable this time of year or, or not. Do they just, are they built to, for, for, for both extremes? Do you know? Well, don't they say that um, like huskies and stuff, the long hair helps them stay cool? Well, yes, it's gonna, it's gonna help you but it's, it still doesn't go for a long period of time. That's why when they're running their races, when they take that break, they're always huffing. They're, mm-hmm. I mean, they're, they're front point, it, it's, and, that's, and that's what they're doing because at that point, the blood runs, it's warm, but now they're on ice where before their body was in a, a, a normal, uh, temperature throughout um, I'm going to tell you what I did one time I almost went to jail for this <laughs> but there was a wonderful fi- um, a firefighter who had his display right next to ours mm-hmm. down in um, Shepherd's Town and there was a policeman telling people to get their dogs in onto a, a mat and we had mats mm-hmm. available and this one woman was pretty disgusted that I would interfere with her beautiful, beautiful, expensive dog. And so she walked from where we were on the street all the way down to the 
campus and came back and was crying and said, would you help me bring my dog? He won't walk. The bottom of the feet of the beautiful, beautiful, expensive dog was so swollen. And so someone there, because we have, you know, all sorts of levels of um, people who know how to do the first aid for that, um, the little paw just exploded. So they asked me to come to court, and I did. And let me tell you, I had to change my phone number. Um, I watched where I went into town over there that, after that. I didn't do it to, to hurt her. It had to be made public that you take it for granted. If you can't walk barefoot on that com convert, your baby dog can't do it either. And when I talk to the guys downtown, you're walking your dog at the wrong time. He said, well, this is when I get off of work. I said, what are you doing for his feet? He said, I never thought about it. So there's the other part. You just don't understand that that animal doesn't have the resistance that we do. We assume that it happens. I think my husband has chased down quite a few uh, walkers with their dogs and said, do you have some protection? What are you going to do with their feet? Yes, sir. <laughs> they, they listen. But this is an, an incredible um, heat wave that we're mm -hmm. in. I don't even want to walk around on the concrete around my, my pool. Tell me about animal advocates. Do you have many members? Uh, or is it an official organization where you have meetings and fundraisers and such? Well, we did. We started in 2009 just, um, you know, for the tethering ordinance, and we kept going. And we had meetings once a month, and um, we worked on other things, other legislation and things like that. Um, but I don't know, 2018, 2019, maybe 2019, every, we're, it was pretty calm, you know. And we said, well, we'll just keep up with, if we see something, we'll keep our core group. Judy's one of the um, core group. We'll keep our core group. If something happens, we can put a bunch of people back together and, and do it. We haven't really had any major animal issues here. In the beginning, we did. We had puppy mills and um, Oh, I remember hoarding. the puppy mill mm -hmm. interviews with you, Judy. So All eyes were, were yeah. on our little town here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when, in fact people who really cared and sat in a seat that were, where we could fix it or try to fix it and educate all eyes were on our little town here and um, and then it, then COVID came along yeah. and, and everybody was keeping in touch and some of the people broke off and have their own specialty um, yeah some cat rescues and oh that's right the like cats mm -hmm. I always forget about the cats mm -hmm. so it's there, but it's not there as an organ. I mean, it's like she called Judy, we're having this problem, and I call somebody, and, and so we get into that. And what we're really hoping to do now is to get some other people, younger people, other people who have had experiences of seeing animals not do well in the environment um, to be in touch. We're, we're, we're ready to show you how to do it. And I have to say, my husband just was you know, in touch with some people over at the pound, and they didn't know. They didn't know what they could do for what was happening with that with that dog. I mean, maybe because he's in the dre the the legitimate uh, drug business. <laughs> yes, <laughs> pharmaceuticals. <laughs> so it's a matter of. Um, waking everybody up again. And I think when we all kind of nestled at home and we're gonna get sick or we're not gonna get sick, I think, it, I, think I read that it was over 75 dogs were adopted and almost 200 were surrendered because it was too much. Yeah. Math doesn't work out in that equation. Well, because other dogs were being surrendered mm -hmm. and they didn't know what to do. None of us. I mean, how, anybody in this room a, um, a specialist on COVID? You know, that kind of thing. And the pound, 
I mean, I, and I talk to people up and down the coast, and they're like, we can't do anything. We're starting to euthanize every dog coming in. And Thanks. they were still street breeders. So if it's a time for other people who want to get together and we can re-educate, I don't think all of it is malice. Oh, I, it's education. What is the difference between a puppy mill and a breeder? We, and we have about a minute left, so that has to be a quick answer. Say again. The difference between a puppy mill and a breeder. A breeder has a a, um, a license, and that's about it here. Okay. So you can false it if you want. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, we learned what Connecticut chocolate chip cookies are this morning, <laughs> Kathy. Twenty seconds. What's a Connecticut chocolate chip cookie? Um, there it is. <laughs> John has a picture of it. It's just um, it's a little fatter than. The other cookies, I don't know. They're they're just different. And they're crispier. Is that the deal? Are they? They're delicious. <laughs> they're delicious. <laughs> oh, very good. The final minute coming up on the program. We'll be right back. And a reminder: on uh, days like this, especially, do not leave your animals inside the car as you stop into a store or whatever. Mm -hmm.